Today I'm gonna to give you my best tips for buying a home and these are 100% based on what we learned not to do. How do we know what not to do? Mauricio and I bought the house from hell. You cannot possibly imagine how bad this house was. <laughs> And we learned a lot about buying a house just from that experience. Hi, I'm Wendy Valencia and today I'm collaborating with Dennis over at True Financial and I'll link his channel down below in the description box if you want to check him out. He's pretty awesome. He's got some amazing advice. And he got together with a whole bunch of other YouTubers about buying a home and so I will link to that playlist at the end of this video if you want to go check all of them out. I am Wendy and my husband Mauricio and I have been plowing through 300 hundred thousand dollars worth of debt as quickly as we can to reach our most optimum financial futures so if you are interested in following us along the rest of our journey please think about clicking that big old red subscribe button down below so oh, before i dive into my tips let me give you like a, just a tiny backstory as to why i am recommending all of these things in 2008 my husband mauricio and i moved to baton rouge louisiana as newlyweds and we bought our first house and it was a disaster. It was just one thing after another that went wrong. For example, we had termite damage that was so extensive that when we went to get it repaired, the contractor actually told us he was amazed that one side of the house was still standing because all of the posts were dust. A skylight that actually was a waterfall every single time it rained. A leak between the wall and the roof line where the water ran down along the inside of the wall and pooled on the floor. Nails through water pipes. A broken hot water main in the foundation. Mold. Oh, and did I mention that the people who owned it before us had a hot tub on the second floor balcony that fell and ripped off the entire back of the house. It all culminated in water coming up through the foundation into our living room that was so bad that I had to put boots at the bottom of the stairs. So every morning when I would go down to get my coffee, I wouldn't get my feet all wet. It was bad. Now I know you're thinking, but Wendy, you should have gotten an inspection and, and they would have caught all that. You would have thought they would have, but we did have an inspection. And the problem was the previous owners weren't of the, um, shall we say the ethical variety. And they had done a lot of surface work that was very cheap to cover up massive damage. For example, on the side of the house with the mold and the termite damage, they had actually ripped down the drywall on the interior of the house and replaced it. So it looked brand spanking new. And the only way you would have seen the damage is if you had drilled into the wall. And the best part is they disclosed nothing. Zero. Nada. So we bought that house for $209,000 and put over 230,000 into it and sold it for 222 three years later. So all of my tips are going to be based 100% on that nightmarish experience. So you can learn from my lessons and never make the same mistake we did. Number one, watch for house fever. What's house fever, Wendy? House fever is when you get so excited about buying a house that all you care about is buying a house. You'll know you have house fever if you spend all day, every day on Zillow, looking at houses in your prospective neighborhoods. Laundry is beeping, I gotta go get it. Mom life, you're not a mom if you're not multitasking. Number two, never, ever, ever buy a house until you have an emergency fund, preferably six months. When you own real estate, the amount of money that you have available to you is very important because it is very true that if you have no free available funds, Murphy will come out and camp in your guest bedroom and he'll bring his cousins, broke, dumb, idiotic, annoying, stupid, I don't know. He'll bring his cousins. It'll be bad. You'll have a lot of guests. Bad things will happen. Always, always, always have an emergency fund available 
to you when you own real estate. Number three, actually go and talk to the neighbors. You hear this advice a lot, but very few people actually do it. Had we actually gone and talked to the neighbors, the neighbors would have told us about the hot tub falling and ripping off the back of the house. They would have told us that the owners did not take good care of their house. So go talk to the neighbors. They know a lot about your house. Sure, it's a little intimidating to knock on somebody's door that you've never met, but you know what? They're gonna be your next door neighbors if you buy that house, so you want them to be nice. Number four, listen to your gut. This is a big one, and I actually suggest this in most aspects of life. Your body will tell you when something is not right. You will have nagging doubts. You will be like, I don't know, maybe we're not doing the right thing. When Mauricio and I were buying this house, we had some major issues. Hurricane Rita came through and ripped off some of the roofing tiles, which by the way, was covered under our contract. And we called and asked them to put a blue tarp on the roof to protect it from flooding. And they didn't. That should have been a sign. Had we listened to our guts and listened to what was actually going on, we would have run screaming away from the deal. Number five, take your time. If you're moving into an area that you don't know and you anticipate you're gonna be there for a long time, rent for a year. Learn the area, explore. A one week trip before you move to the area is not enough time to figure out if the schools are actually great or the neighborhood is as awesome as it looks on paper. Had Mauricio and I rented, we would have done two things. One, we would have never bought a house because we would have figured out that we weren't cut out for Baton Rouge. And two, we would never have bought in that neighborhood because it was in a horrible, horrible location. Traffic was hard to get to. And we actually found a neighborhood that we loved. And had we actually known about it, we would have never bought in the neighborhood we bought in. Number six, never buy a house unless you are 100% sure you will be in the area for the next five to seven years. Why five to seven years? Because most financial advisors will tell you that it generally takes five to seven years to recuperate all the closing costs and everything associated with a mortgage before you're actually making headway on your principal. Obviously that number is fluid and changes with every single scenario, but it's a good rule of thumb. Number seven, you're not gonna be able to HGTV your house. You know, those shows that you watch where the house is a disaster and in 30 minutes it becomes amazing and you think it's just gonna be a little elbow grease and, and paint and it'll look spectacular. That is never the case. Remodeling a home, whether you want to or you have to, is hard. It's hard to live in, it's hard to deal with. If you have never done it before, I recommend running screaming away from it because it does involve frequently having your house open to nature and a sheet of plastic for several days. And when your backyard is full of skunks and possums, that's not necessarily a good thing. That's when you realize HGTV is not as fun when you're living through it. Number eight, do not under any circumstance consider looking at a house out of your price range. In fact, truthfully, I would say try and get at the lower end of your price range. You'll save yourself some money in the long run. You can find that amazing house if you're just patient and wait. The problem with seeing that house that's outside of your price range is it's outside of your price range for a reason. It's got upgrades that you can't afford in your price range and you're gonna want those upgrades and you're gonna fall in love with that house and then you're gonna be, end up buying a house out of your price range. Now, while this is not something that we actually did, this is something I learned after the second house that we saw, which was $50,000 above our price range, our realtor said, I wanna give you a good idea of what's available in the next price range. I loved it. I wanted it. It took several people to convince me that I did not want $50,000 more worth of house. 
number nine, buy in a good school district even if you don't have kids. I'm not even kidding about this one. We did not have kids. We didn't, we got pregnant right at the end of our time in Baton Rouge. But having a good school district is paramount to being able to sell your home down the road because you may not care if it has a good school district, but somebody will. So I'll see you in the next one. See ya.